Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the lecture on morphological analysis. As I mentioned at the end of the last lecture, morphological analysis is what linguists are going to use um, to figure out what different parts of words mean in a language they might be unfamiliar with. So there's kind of a basic process to this that I will go over with you. The way we do it is we com compare words that have similar types of meanings or similar types of sounds. So we'll do this and we'll try to find um, a word with a particular sequence of sounds and one without it. And then we might hypothesize that the additional sounds um, add the additional meaning. So um, basically we'll look for matches of similar sounds that have similar meanings. Um, and then just as an example of that, we have this language caro. So in caro, we have um, this word Oyawan, which means I left. We have this word omamnoi, which means I saw myself. We have owakan, which means I am angry, and oket, which means I walked. So try to take a second, and actually I've already underlined it for you, but think about what sound is similar between all of these and what that might mean. So in all of these, we have this sound o at the start. So oyawan, omamnoi, etc. In all the translations, we have I left, we have I saw myself, we have I am angry, we have I walked. So the one thing in common between all of these is that they start with the sound o, and they all tell us that this is an action that I did. So in kind of a morphological analysis sense, we'll look at these and we'll say this sound o always occurs when the subject is first person. So because of that, we would guess that the sound O indicates a first person subject when it's at the start of a verb. So um, one other thing, or one other way to look at morphological analysis is that we can look at pairs of words where one word has a certain sequence of sounds and one does not and then hypothesize that they have additional meaning. So um, that's basically what we just did there, um, just to kind of reiterate it. But um, basically these words where we have one sound that's staying the same between the words and then other sounds are changing, um, the one sound that's staying the same will probably lead to a certain part of the meaning staying the same. So in the previous slide, we saw that uh, that one sound, O, oh, staying the same, led to uh, the subject always being the same first person. So that's kind of the basics of morphological analysis. Um, it does get kind of a bit more complicated on occasion. Um, so if you look at this example um, from a language called Dolaka Noir, we have the word for house, che. And then we have at the house, or cheku. We have the word for water, loku. And then at or in the water, lokuku. We have the word for horse, sara. And on the horse, saraku. So um, basically, uh, just if you look at all of these, we have nouns on the left and some kind of location on the right. So we have che and cheku, meaning at the house. We have um, si and siku, meaning on the wood. So what we would do here is look at what's the same sound between some of these examples. And the thing we can do is say that there's this ku sound at the end of all of these words on the right. And all of these words on the right tend to have a meaning of location. So we would guess that this ku tells us that something is located at the noun it's attaching to. So something's located at the temple in Mandirku. So here's a, another example that um, I've kind of left a few things blank for you to try to fill in on your own. Um, this is a language called Ilocano. We have the word for machete, buneng. So we know that that means machete. We have agtagi bunenka, where we have agtagi and then buneng and then ka, which means you carry a machete. We have 
Man Agtagi Bunenka, which means you always carry a machete. Then we have Agtagi Bunenda, which means they carry a machete. Agtagi Buneng Kanto, meaning you will carry a machete. And we have all these different um all these different uh, kind of variations on someone carrying a machete. So what I've done here is I've left uh, some of the English translation blank here, and I've left uh, some of the Ilocano blank here. What I would like you to do is to try to take a little bit and try to break down what sounds you think might mean certain things. And if you can do that, you might be able to figure out what's going to go in the blanks there. So there is going to be a homework problem along these lines. So if you have trouble doing this, let me know. And um, just, yeah, if you have an issue, I can try to help you out with this. And I will be putting up kind of a, probably a more exhaustive tutorial on how to do these outside of the lecture. So um, if you do have trouble with this, let me know. But what I'd like you to do here, again, is just to try to break down what sounds correspond to what meanings. So starting with machete, for example, we have buneng. And then we have agtagi bunenka, meaning you carry a machete. So we know that agtagi and ka are adding some kind of you carry meaning. We don't necessarily know if agtagi is you or if ka is you at this point but we do know that one of them probably means you and carry. And then we can say, for example, ma nagtagi bunenka. The only difference between that and nagtagi bunenka is the man at the start. So we know that man means always because that's the only difference in the translation. So kind of breaking things down like that and trying to use a little bit of logic to figure out what sounds correspond to what meaning is the key here. Um, so I will be putting up a more of a tutorial for this later, but just try to take a little bit and see how you can do with this type of activity on your own. And actually, yeah, there's a few more. Um, yeah, so this is kind of how to do it. Um, yeah. So what I'll do here is um, basically just go through this slide really quick. If you um, took the time to figure out um, how to do it on your own, great. Um, if you had a little trouble, this should try to help you through it. So here's that little exhaustive tutorial I promised you. Um, so basically we have buneng, which we can break into agtagi and buneng and ka. Um, so agtagi and ka probably mean you or carry. Then we have things like Agtagi and Buneng and Da further down. So we have um, what we can do with this Agtagi and Buneng and Da is look at um, Agtagi Buneng Ka. <clears throat> so the only difference there is Ka versus Da. So we look at how did the meaning change? You change today. So what we can probably say is that Ka means you and Da means they. Okay, so now that we've done that, we know that ka means you and da means they. We can look at n agtagi buneng da. So um, we go from they carry a machete with agtagi buneng da to they carry the machete in nagtagi buneng da. So the difference there is the n sound at the start, and the difference in meaning is it goes to past tense. So if there's a n sound at the start, we know that it's past tense. So up here, we've got, like I mentioned before, ma nagtagi bunenka, where ma means always. Then we have something like agtagi buneng kanto, which means you will carry a machete. So what we'll do there is find something where the only difference is the n to. So we have agtagi bunenka, Agtagi buneng kanto. So what's the difference there? Just the into, and then the difference in meaning is future or will. So when we have into on the end, that's going to be a, a future tense. Um, we have nagtagi buneng ak, which is I carried a machete. 
So we know that ak is I, just like da is they or ka is you. Then we have agtagi buneng ak to, which means I will carry a machete. So it looks like to is giving us future tense, just like nto. So that's something we'll look at a little bit later. But for now, we can just say that to and nto both give us future tense. They do have different forms, like nto versus to, but um, that is uh, something to do with the phonology. So if you uh, did, if you were comfortable with the phonology from last week, you may be able to figure that out. But for now, just kind of consider them to be the same, uh, the same ending. <clears throat> so let's take non tagi uh, buneng ak. Um, so, let's try to guess what that means. We have ak tagi buneng, which is carry a machete. We have ak, which means I. So I, um, actually that should be man tagi buneng ak, not non tagi buneng ak. I will fix that in the slides um, that I put up on Learn. But so when when we have um, man tagi buneng ak, that's going to mean I carry a machete, and then we have the man at the start, which will mean I always carry a machete, since we figured out that man means always. Then how would we say you carried a machete? Um, so when we're going to do this, we will want to figure out what, me what part meant you, that was the ka, what part meant past tense, so find something that meant past tense. So for example, we have this. Um, non tagi bunenga. So the N at the start means um, past tense. So what we would do to say you carried a machete is take the N, put it at the start of agtagi buneng, so nagtagi buneng, and then the word for you, or the morpheme for you, was ka. So it would be nagtagi buneng ka, for you carried a machete. So um, that was kind of how to do morphological analysis in general. Um, so that is kind of uh, probably going to be confusing to start with, but um, I will give you some exercises on that to try to help you along. Um, but if you kind of follow that guide from the uh, machete carrying examples, that should hopefully help you out and uh, let you figure out how to do some of these things on your own. Um, so in the next lecture, we'll be looking at kind of different types of meanings that are expressed by different types of morphemes. So uh, some morphemes tend to express certain things, and other types of morphemes tend to express other things. So in the next lecture, that is what we will be looking at.